just in looking at these two verses, in the first verse there, he gives two things to do. And then the outcome of having your life like that, you can call upon him in the day of trouble, and he will deliver you. And do that deliverance, you will give testimony and have a great testimony for others to come to him also. What struck me about that on that day that we heard about the cancer, but also this, we're in a day of trouble. <laughs> it's not talking 24 hour day, it's talking about seasons. And it is trouble, it's called COVID, it's called lockdown. And uh, it, it seems, you know, it, it's, my heart goes out to people because it's affecting everything. It's affecting our bodies, it's affecting us emotionally, it's affecting our mind. And my heart goes out to the missionary couple that we just prayed for, that Sandy and I know, that's in, in Haiti and, and the DR, and he loses his, his wife. And, but we have a hope. We know that she's with the Lord Jesus right now. Hallelujah. But it doesn't make it easier. We don't understand all these things, but we do know that God will make everything for good to those who love Him and to those who are called according to His purpose. I notice here in this verse it says, I will deliver you. It's not somebody else talking. It's not somebody quoting. It's God speaking to David. And David wrote it down for us. But God says, I will. And if God ever says, I will, he will. <laughs> you can trust in him. And then you get this wonderful part of the verse, you glorify me. In Psalm 50, verse 14, 15, in another translation called the NLT, it says, Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God and keep the vows that you made to the Most High. And we'll talk about the vows in a minute because every covenant with God or with each other has vows that both sides take. That's what makes it a covenant. It's not just an agreement. It's not just a partnership. It's a covenant where you become part of that person and that person becomes part of you. And there are vows that are taken. And it, it says in then in verse 15, uh, in this translation, it says, then after you have done these two things, call on to me when you are in trouble. And it uses the word, I will rescue you. Because that word rescue there is a word that talks, I will heal you, I will save you, I will rescue you, I will deliver you. It's a fantastic thing. God will say, I will. And he does. I will rescue you and you'll give me glory. I, was, I looked this up in 15 different translations. And I thank the Lord that we have so many translations we can look. Because I don't have the physical books. I used to have the physical books that in my whole desk and then I had about eight different books and then you have to go like this and this. And then they, they really got smart. They put four translations in one book. That was really nice. And write side-by-side -side translation. Now all you have to do is go on the computer. And I got these you know, 20 translations. Anyway, the message was very interesting. It's a paraphrase of the Bible, but it says this. In verse 14, spread for me a banquet of praise. That, that, that's, that's something. But I said, why not thanksgiving? Because thanksgiving is the highest form of praise. Being thankful. And you can do it with music, but most of the time you, when you thank somebody, you're not, uh, you're not singing to them. It's something that's coming from the heart and you're thankful. And for something that I will get there. Um, and so you, with, within that, that phrase, spread for me a banquet of praise, then it says, serve God, high God with a feast 
of kept promises. Because vows are promises as well. And says, and then call for help when you're in trouble, and I will help you, and you will honor me. I will help you, I will rescue you, I will, um, I will just deliver you. And then you have this incredible opportunity to give God glory through your testimony <coughs> through somebody that is not saved yet. Because it's not just quoting scriptures at them, it's saying, hey, this happened to me. I got healed. And I want to tell you as a testimony, after three months of hearing about the cancer and not, maybe not living much longer, God came and He healed me in three less than three months. And I give Him all praise and glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Nothing is impossible with God. The only question I could ask is, why me, Lord? Why? Why did I get healed and somebody else didn't get healed? And how well they answer. All I know is he says, walk by faith. I know my father walked by faith, but he passed away from a disease. But he can testify that he walked by faith all the way up until the end. Because there's three certainties, of course. One is that you're born and everybody... And, and life is short. And the second certainty is everybody dies. It's going to happen. And you shouldn't be living as if it's not going to happen because it is going to happen. And there's a third certainty that some most people don't know is everybody is going to live forever. It all depends on where and with who. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now I gotta just take a little break. Just give me a second. <laughs> so I want to look at this uh, this verse a little bit more in detail because it is so important. The last part we love, and I love the, the first part as well. But it says, "Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving." And so I want to look at that, because within this, the first thing is a comparison. And I believe that David got a glimpse of the new covenant. Because back then, when they talk about sacrifice, you're talking about sheep, goats, maybe a bird, all this kind of, and you bring it at least once a year for your sins. Because without the shedding of blood, blood there is no forgiveness. There has to be a lamb or something that once a year, but even more so, they had to carry their sins the whole year until they got forgiveness. And they didn't get forgiveness because God set it up that way. And that's what they said. But the verses before this Psalm, verse 12 and 13, you don't need to put it up. They, God just said, do I, do I need these sheep? Do I drink blood? Do I do this? Do this? And then he comes and says, make thanksgiving your sacrifice. Wow. Not the sheep, not this, not anything you have. Make thanksgiving your sacrifice. And so that comparison is there that the, 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 you're giving something to God that you have. A sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. But then I ask the question, why give God thanks? Because that was the problem back then. They did it out of duty. They even did it out of obedience. But that's not what it is in the New Testament. You do it because you love God and you want to please Him. Wow. Wow. It has to be something from the heart, something that you're saying, and you, it, it's not because it's my duty to give God thanks. It's not my duty to come to church and thank God. I can't wait. And you have to have that. The third thing about the Thanksgiving sacrifice is that it's a choice. Wow. A choice. You have to develop that choice. 
I can remember as a little kid, you know, somebody gave me something and Mama says, now say thank you. I don't feel like thanking them. Actually, it wasn't even what I wanted. <laughs> oh, yeah. you have to learn, you have to develop this heart of thanksgiving because there's so many things that come against you, including the devil himself, that will come and get you to be unthankful. And to get you to look at yourself and say, oh, I deserve this and all that kind of stuff. Thankfulness and being thankful to God is a choice. And it is in my favorite phrase now, real time. It's not just talking about it. It's actually being thankful. Lately, I've been waking up in the morning and not feeling like I want to get up. Depression is setting in. Mental things come in. Then the devil starts talking to me. And I really don't feel like it. And then the Lord says, yeah, remember Psalm 50? Make Thanksgiving your sacrifice. And so I get up in the morning, and I've been doing this the last three weeks, because I felt the same. I'm getting up and say, Lord, thank you. <laughs> And then I thought, what do you thank him for? And so I started making a list of all these kind of things and put them into to a group. And the, 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 the first one was just material things. Because you run out of kind of things to say, you know, or quote scriptures and things. Lord, thank you for my house. Thank you that I have running water. <laughs> and going to places you know, in, in the bush in Kenya or somewhere like that makes you very thankful to be able to, 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 to have running water, hot water, have a toilet. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for the house. Thank you for our car. Thank you. You know, there's so many things, but the material things, and it, it's, it's just amazing, the extra blessing things. God just abundantly blesses you, especially when you're thankful, because you just get so much joy. And then able to be a blessing, that's even greater. And, you know, some, some people, and Sandy and I do, we, we put some money aside every week, just a little, so that we can be a blessing to somebody. And it's just such a joy to be able to give somebody something. And it's just fantastic. And you thank God, and they thank you, and they thank God. And, wow, it just goes on and on and on. And there'll be suddenlies that happen with finances and just the material things that we got. The second thing is to thank God for the spiritual things. Thank Him for His blood, most of all, that cleanses me, and that when I confess my sin, He will forgive me, and we get it all straightened out all over again. Thank you, Lord, that you talk with me. Thank you. Just so many things. The third thing is your, uh, your friends, the people around you. Thank you, Lord. I thank the Lord for our neighbors. I thank the Lord for my wife, kids, and whoever, just great friends in here. I thank the Lord for Stephen Tess. And it just be thankful. And you, God will bless you abundantly. But it's not because you want to be blessed. It's because you love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. And that is love goes on and on and it develops and goes deeper and deeper and deeper. I was looking at the opposite of Thanksgiving. And that's really uh, quite amazing. The opposite of Thanksgiving is complaining critical spirit, a judgmental spirit, unthankful, ungrateful, lover of self, lover of money and what it can get for you, selfishness, uh, resentful, and I deserve. Wow. Does that sound familiar? Those are all out of the book of Timothy. Telling these are the major signs of the times. 
signs of the times we live in. And for certain, that's what is happening today. Be thankful. And then he says, and pay your vows to the Lord. And I was thinking of these vows, as I said, there's, there's, there's two major vows that you take to make a covenant with God. And it's mentioned, it's coupled together 37 times in the scriptures. And those two vows are steadfast love and faithfulness. And God takes those vows through Jesus Christ. I will never leave you. I will always be faithful. Um, and I will always love you. And we take the same vows and promise to be faithful and to love Him. One of the greatest places is that everybody knows is Jeremiah, he is just going nuts because he's thrown into a prison, thrown into a well, and he laments of everything going wrong, and everything just, it just, on top of him, and depression, and his soul can hardly have, but he says, this is what I remember, Lamentations 33, verse 22. He says, the steadfast love, that's the vow, of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end because mercy is part of love. They are new every morning. Wow, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. No mercy especially. Great is your faithfulness. We have it up there all, oh, yes. And there's a song here. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy. Yeah, okay, Lord. 
Yeah, and you have these times, I call it talk talk, and you know him, he says, call on to me. And when you call in the time of trouble, and, I, and I'm in that time a lot. In fact, it's a season, like I said, of trouble. When you're sick, when you got this problem, that problem, when you got all these things. Wow. He says, call upon me. And you can know he's going to be faithful because you are full of thanksgiving to the Lord. And you are paying your vows. And even if you break a vow of faithfulness, you can go to him and get it right. And he is faithful to forgive you. So it's always right, and you can trust this verse. Call upon him, and he says, and I will. I will deliver you. I will heal you. I will save you. Wow. From mental, physical, body, all, all of it. Spiritually, if you don't know him. He'll save you. And you'll know your way is on to heaven. And you'll know what to do. And you call by faith. Faith makes all things possible. And when you get your miracle, when you get it, then give Him glory. Tell people about it. Because that's the greatest part of taking the gospel is that it affected you personally. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. One of the words, and I'll just do this one word. First of all, I'll do all three of them. Well, the first word was suddenly. And I spoke about that a couple times. And things happen suddenly. But good things. One of the biggest ones was Paul, Paul and Silas in prison and beaten and Everything was going wrong and nothing looked promising. They were singing hymns and being thankful. They were paying their vows. And what happened suddenly, there was an earthquake. I don't know how the earthquake affected the rest of the land, but that earthquake did something that's impossible to do. It had the, the doorways open up and the chains around their ankles and, and hands all fell off. Earthquakes don't do that. God performed a suddenly. And you can have your suddenlies. The second word is the word refocus. And that's a very, very important word in our time and day because God wants us to refocus. You refocus your life. The leaders got to refocus the churches. There has to be a refocus because we easily get off. Refocus on our goals, our purpose, the season, the main thing becoming the main thing in your own personal life. The Apostle Paul said uh, in Romans 1, 1, that Paul, a servant of Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Wow. Set apart for the gospel. That's the main thing. We heard about the fields are white unto harvest. That's the main thing. In fact, that's the only prayer that Jesus said you should pray. Pray for laborers because that's the main thing. And then in Mark 16, it says, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Wow. That's it. Go into all the world. That's the orders. That was given before the birth of the church. And verse 16 gives it plain and clear, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not will be condemned. It is life and death situation, and my heart goes out to people that don't believe in God and don't want anything because of all the tragedy. And that's why your testimony gets in there and say, yes, God will do things for you, but not only do things, he will save you from the destruction of your soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we're not there to change the world or to change fallen man. We're there to deliver them from the world. Hallelujah. We're not trying to change our society. We're trying to deliver people out of that world and that society they live in. Because the end is destruction. And we have, when you get saved, you're delivered out of that kingdom of darkness, which is the kingdom of this world, and into the kingdom of light. 
and you're translated into that kingdom, uh, kingdom, you are delivered from the world, and then you are sent right back into the world. Hallelujah. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That doesn't mean that you go on a, a witness walk to ferry. It doesn't mean that you don't do that. Here's what it means. But a quote from John Wesley referring to the gospel. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was John Wesley's thought. This is the purpose and the refocus of our lives in Jesus. And God promises that as you go, these signs will follow. You cast out demons, you lay your hands on the sick, and they will recover. And God wants us to use you and me in these times. And the third word, suddenly, refocus, and the third word is bespoke. I love that word, bespoke, it means tailor-made, and everything that, that Jesus did was bespoke. His entire ministry was what he heard the Father show him and speak to him, and then he did it. And that's how we need to be. But when I was looking at this word bespoke, I realized that you are bespoke by God. Yes. He uniquely made each one of you. You are one of a kind. And God loves you so much. He made you to look how you look everything. That's, he, and he's got a plan. He's got a plan for your life of how you fit into the overall, like a one piece of a puzzle. It's so unique and it will not fit anywhere else, but this puzzle fits in God's plan for the generation that you are in right now, at this time, in real time, God got this plan because He loves you and you are made exactly the way you are made so that you can effectively win people for the gospel. Praise God. All your skills, everything that you, you have and that what you don't have, He's made you specifically and our job is to find out where I fit in and get on with that overall plan of getting the gospel to the world through personal involvement. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And therefore, pray for bespoke moments. Pray for, we used to call them divine appointments. God will bring people into your life that you can relate to and share, and he wants to give you these miracles. Finally, in closing, I want to bring one verse, it's Matthew 9, verse 22. And it's about Jesus and healing, and that verse says this, it says, Jesus turned and see her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly, the woman was made well. Instantly, others are immediately, some are suddenly, others at that moment. Woman, you have been made well, healed, and delivered. And I was looking at that bespoke moment because this lady had this issue of blood that just would not go away. She went to the doctors, and, and which is good to do, but the doctors could find nothing. They couldn't help her. 
And she didn't know what to do, but she said in her heart, if I could just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, if I could just mosey in secretly somehow, because I can't get through the crowd, if I could, the intent of her heart, she says, if I could touch it, I'll be healed. And that's faith. And when he touched Jesus, the power of God went out to her. And it's the same today. It was the same in the book of Acts. The power of God will go out through the prayer. If your faith is there, it says, yes, I'm going to touch Jesus now. Because you don't have to touch him physically. But that's when Jesus said to her daughter, be of good cheer, be of comfort. Understand, your faith has made you whole. And that's what God wants to do today. He really does mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever. God can do it. And we just thank you, Lord. This is what Smith Wigglesworth said. And maybe let's all stand up because I'm going to have a time of prayer for this. And We're just going to have people around. We've got, uh, like we've done before, um, people in the back. And Rosie Neville will be here, and I'll be here with uh, Jenny. And uh, you come up to us if you want to have that touch. But come thinking, I'm going to touch the Lord. This is what Smith Wigglesworth said. He says, God wants you, have, wants you to have a living faith now. To get a vital touch, shaking the foundations of all your weakness, sickness, emotional needs. When you were saved, you were saved the moment you believed. And you will be healed the moment you believe. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Here's his prayer at the end. Lord Jesus, we need your touch. Shake our weaknesses. Break our infirmities. Destroy our diseases. Jesus, touch me. Heal me. I believe you are my healing. You are my wholeness. You are my health. You are my strength. You are my salvation. Sickness, be gone in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, just as we pray here, when people come up, may you truly, truly touch people's lives as they touch you. We need you, Lord. We really do, Lord. Especially emotionally. I just sense in the mind how we so easily get, get off and just get attacked. Lord, help us there. Help us not to be anxious. Help us not to be worried, stressed, and depressed. But Lord, help us in prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, Lord. We make the request known to you. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for that great guard that you put around us when we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. Help us each day, Lord, to, to do verse 50, Psalm 50, 14 and 15. To make sacrifice our thanksgiving and to continue with our vows, Lord, that we will never leave you or forsake you. And then, Father, help us to call, and you will set us free. In Jesus' name.